unconscionable. It's a remarkable defensive play. We are just scratching the surface. I mean, I, I truly believe that in 10 years we will look at the game of basketball completely differently because we would have discovered things that we just couldn't have known before. So it would shock me if we didn't change the way that people look at basketball. So many highlight plays, he has become. The way people count things changed. So before, what happened was people would sit there and watch the game and write things down, and that's what became the box score. And people, same for basketball, people would watch the game and write stuff that would happen. But there's a lot of missing things missing because people can only mark things every so often, and there's all this stuff that happens in between that's very, very important. And the great thing about today is that they have all kinds of completely new technology in, in a lot of sports, and now basketball, where they can basically track every single thing at very, very small time scales, like 25 frames per second for basketball. Well, that's one of the big challenges, is that when the data gets to us, it's just this big log file of lots and lots of numbers, right? And so it's a challenge to transform that into a meaningful uh, you know, data that, that we can actually apply algorithms to, and we can actually you know, discern patterns from. We're making up ground after intermission. There were far more teams that had uh, a sport view last year. There are up to 10 teams have it now, and I'm sure more will have it next year. Um, there's the holy grail of uh, many sports, and basketball included, is to figure out defense. Um, a lot of the, the reason is because box scores have a lot of off offensive statistics, but there's very little about defense. And uh, basically with this data, we, we might be able to solve the whole holy grail, which is what is good defense? What does it mean to play good defense? Because if somebody runs around with the ball for 24 seconds and misses a shot, you could actually see what the players were doing to prevent a good shot from being taken. We know, we know exactly how every player moves before they take a shot, so we can tell if they just stand still and take a shot or what kind of moves they make before they take the shot, how they like to go to the basket. So we can really do very specific player profiling if we do it right. People had figured out that the mid-range uh, jump shot was a very bad shot. What we found out is it's an even worse shot than people thought before because mid-range shots are the worst kind of shot to try and get back. I mean, it's virtually, it's very hard to get that back as an offensive team. So there was an important thing that there are two things that people thought were, had nothing to do with each other. The chance that the shot would go in and the chance that you would get it back were treated as two different things. But because of our research, we know that both of them are dependent on the same thing, which is where you took the shot. The, the interesting thing is that once we built these visualizations, I find that watching the visualizations is actually more, uh, it, it's more clarifying to me than watching video of you know, the players on the court. I mean, you can really see the spatial relationships, and that's something that you actually don't get watching video. Three of the four teams in the uh, left are actually using the data. Now, I would say the most important thing to being successful is having very good players, but a lot of these games are very, very close. For example, you know, in the game, uh, the Celtics Heat game, it was 99.99, it went to overtime. One slight strategic shift could have made a difference in a, a win or a loss for either team. So that's really where the value for a lot of this stuff is. In, even when good teams play good teams, in close games, you want every little advantage that you can get. Back and get matched up. It's